Today, we are here for our very first episode. I'm excited to bring to you Mr. Darnell Self. We're going to talk to him right after this. Had a vision, they made a plan. Put it into practice with the actions of my hand. Put it into practice with my circle and my fam. Had my bad before I became a businessman. This is an endless rhyme I ever wrote. Said I was born to be dope. Come on. This is an endless rhyme I ever wrote. Said I was born to be dope. So welcome back, uh, Born to Be Dope. This first episode, man, when I was thinking about who I wanted for my first guest on my new show, this is not my first show, but this is the dopest show <laughs> we've done. I was like, let me call on one of the men who's been most influential in my life, my development, my journey, Mr. Darnell Self. So welcome to the show. That. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. Honored to be on. All right, man. Glad to have you here. We're going to talk about a lot of stuff today. Uh, for those who don't know who Mr. Self is, I'm going to give him a second to introduce himself to you. Um, business owner, entrepreneur, leader, professional speaker, media uh, guru <laughs> and podcast host yourself, you and your wife. So Mr. Self, go ahead and tell the people who you are, and then we're going to jump into this conversation. Yeah, I appreciate that man and thanks for your overly kind words i am i am a co-host of the self-talk experience podcast my wife and i are both co-hosts uh because we realize the things we say to ourselves about ourselves eventually determines what and even who we attract for ourselves and so we've had a lot of experience in having to shift the things we've said to ourselves over the past years uh we uh we started our journey as entrepreneurs back in our 20s, which was, you know, last year. <laughs> <laughs> That's me. But uh, we, we uh, grew up here in Maryland, uh, still live in Maryland in Prince George's County. Uh, my wife and I both went to college here, Bowie State and Morgan State for her. And we met working at this retail store, mm -hmm. uh, as you know, working at a real trendy men's and women's clothing store. And I actually liked working at the retail store because I like fashion. But what I did not like was the 60 to 80 hour work weeks uh, dictated by somebody else. Mm -hmm. I don't mind working 80 hours a week if it's for my dream Absolutely. and my legacy Absolutely. and the generations to come. But it was for somebody else. Mm -hmm. And I just figured, man, I'm not going to do this for the rest of my life. And so I stepped out on faith at uh, 25 years old. And my wife and I have been job free. She worked at uh, BET at the time, Black Entertainment nice. Television. Um, when I quit my job and so she uh, she supported us man for for years okay. uh, while I was you know getting my entrepreneurial footing mm. and uh, at 29 years old she was able to walk away from uh, BET on maternity leave with our son Makai and that's how I keep track of how long she's really been on eternity <laughs> leave because he's 23 <laughs> years old yeah oh, nice. so it's been a blessing man four kids we've been stay-at-home parents and uh, we travel the world with them so their education has been far greater than the four walls of their school and now we've uh, we've had the opportunity to impact a lot of lives and have helped others find um, the best versions of themselves as entrepreneurs as well so exciting so exciting so I mean I didn't want to jump in there but I was like you know you start saying stuff <laughs> <laughs> Talking about your wife supported you. I know there's a whole bunch of women out there right now. Like, but listen, they there now, right? Yeah. But anyway, before that, because I forgot, so it was the first show, right? So I forgot. Make sure you subscribe to this channel, like the show, share it out. I right, had to get that in there first. All right, so make sure you do that. I, I promise next week I'll be better. <laughs> but listen, so let's, let's jump into sure. this journey because, uh, like you said, like I think you were 20. I probably met you about, you were 21 last year. Probably, I guess I was like 20 and a half, right? <laughs> so when we met, but no, like, I've been on this journey. I, 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 you know, it was been, it's been over 20 years. Mm. Yeah, over 20 years now wow. since I was first introduced to you. Yeah. But let's talk about, um, I'll get into my part and how I come into the story a little bit later. But let's talk about you um, stepping out there. And, and, and I kind of joked about it, but I know there had to be pressure. Yeah. Had to be, uh, you know, people looking at you kind of sideways. Sure. And, and even more pressure on your wife. Sure. Explaining why she was at work. Right. And you out there chasing some dream. Yeah. Talk to us about, take us back there and uh, kind of in that place, how you were going through that journey. Because this show, we talk about master, magnify, and monetize your unique dopeness mm -hmm. for, for maximum success. All right. Yeah. So um, there's going to be some journey. There's going to be some ups and downs. But let's yeah. talk about that time frame when you all were in that place where you knew there was something you were called to do. Sure. And you could see it, but it wasn't necessarily coming to fruition as fast as everyone else would have liked to have seen it. Yeah. Take us back there. Yeah, and that and it all comes from comparison, right? Because, mm -hmm. you know, what is what is a long or lengthy season mm -hmm. if not compared to someone else's? Right. So the only reason we say it's taking a while is because we're comparing it to somebody else. Mm -hmm. 
and otherwise what's a long time like for me it was four years right. four years of this season of of drought but it was really my season of preparation it was a season where I was growing I was learning how to be more patient how to build healthy relationships uh, how to be down but look up I mean all these things are are opportunities for me to grow my mindset necessary to win big uh, and so I was shaped during that time mm-hmm. but again that four years for somebody they're like man four years that's a long time in comparison to what right and for some that's a short time right right? but it's all mostly in comparison so one of the things i had to really learn is not to compare myself to someone else's season Mm. and uh and that's tough sometimes right and so because we know it's most social media today so social media today uh most folks uh, only see the highlights yeah absolutely right so they really don't know how long it took for an example um you know we we had a lot of success uh, in an endeavor that took us eight months to gain traction, but really it was four years in eight months. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I say, Hey, it's eight months, you know, but it was, I, I, I don't always count the four years right, right. that it took me to, to again, gain, um, some real momentum. So, but anyway, man, so I, I think that it's important if you're in that season right now and in that season of what could be called struggle, mm-hmm. it is important to, to frequently affirm the things you are grateful for in that current season. Yeah. Because that allows you to at least smile. Because listen, if if I had gas in my car during that time, yeah. that was a good thing. Right. And so I was thankful that I had gas to make it to the appointment to meet this new contact that could open the door. So I had to really my mother, mother in law bought me this gratitude journal. Uh And every day you had to write in it what you were grateful for. And that's what allowed me to have that mindset, because easy to complain about the five things that didn't happen that day. But forget about the thing that did happen that day. Man, you you know, I hope you all are getting this because we're going to be dropping nuggets. And it's not going to (laughs) say I don't have graphics on the screen say (laughs) nugget. So I hope you paid attention because uh, I should have wrote my own notes because I'm like, Man, I want to ask about this, but that that journal itself. But we'll go back to you talking about comparison because mm-hmm. that's really where the whole "Born to Be Dope" came from. Is is about being unapologetically great at being you mm. and who you are. Yeah. Because I've seen how we always are comparing ourselves to yeah. other people, comparing our success. You know, I've been an author for you know, 17, 18 years now, yeah, and even awesome. you know, speaker. Now I'm sitting there. I know my journey where I want to go. Some people ask me, "How many books?" I'm like, "I've written ten books." To me, it's like, yeah, I've written 10 books because I know where I want to go. Right, right, right. Other people are like, 10 books, that's amazing because they haven't yeah. written one. This is exactly But right. you know, it's, again, that comparison. So even at certain levels of success, you don't fall out of that. You just got to be uh, uh, diligent about making sure that you do that that positive self-talk. And let's talk about that journaling thing because I learned that from you. Yeah. Um, I always tell people when I went to college, one thing I wish I would have done different in college is journaled every day, mm-hmm. you know, because you forget so much. Yeah. Uh, but when you talk about journaling, Take us to a time where, uh, you know, and I'm putting, you know, this is not rehearsed, y'all. So, yeah. you know, take us to a time when that journal kind of, you, you opened it up, saw something positive, and that kind of, that, that that changed your life, like that kept you going. Yeah. That was, a, you know, what you needed at that moment. Yeah, no no doubt, man. It, it was, um, it was a time where I felt like I was a disappointment to my mom. I'm the only child, so I'm a mama's boy. And I felt like I had disappointed her because here I am with a college degree. I did the things she asked me to do, and I'm still suffering. I'm still asking her for money right. as a grown man. So, And she's never out of her mouth said you're a disappointment to me. This is how I felt. Right. So I'm not right. putting that on her. Um, and so I felt like I was a disappointment as a son, a disappointment as a husband, a disappointment as a father because my son was eight years old and I couldn't buy him a birthday cake. So the little things some, sometimes you take for granted and, 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 and certainly today because a birthday cake is, you know, we don't even think about the cost of that. Right. But I remember those times because it was in my journal mm. and because people often ask, you know, how, man, how do you stay so humble with the success you've been blessed to have? Because I remember where I've come from. Right. And part of it is because I journal because sometimes I want to forget the those things but I go back and reflect through my journal and it, it causes me to remember how far we've come from but there were also moments in those journals that it caused me to say you know what I'm, I'm grateful because it could be worse right. Right. You know what I mean? And I can see my progression, even though it didn't show up as a car, it didn't show up as a house, it didn't show up as a new watch, but it showed up that in my journal that, man, I'm grateful for this. Just a year before when I was journaling, I didn't have that. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I was grateful for progression. Yeah. Even though it wasn't material trappings. 
Yeah. So that kept me going too, knowing that I was moving. I was moving ahead. Yeah. Yeah. You, you, you taking me? I, sh- I don't think I was ready for this, man. <laughs> <laughs> you taking me? Bro? I'm like thinking about time because I was our journeys obviously were different, but I was on. I've been on that same journey when I was introduced uh, to the business mm-hmm. and, and you. And, and what really sparked me, uh, what stuck out with me rather, was um, when I saw you and I saw the, the crew who was leading with you. And I was like, these guys look like me. They're from where I'm from, the state. I'm from Baltimore, right, you know, from right. Southern Rail, but you know, from the same state. And I was like, if they did it, I can do it. Cause yeah. see, in high school, I tell this story often, uh, you know, you had memory books in high school, mm-hmm. graduates. So what do you want to do when you, what do you want to be when you grow up? Yeah. And I look back, I didn't remember this, but I looked back at my high school memory book and it said, I wanted to be a multi-million dollar business owner. Wow. In 12th grade. So wow. I'm still working on the multi-million part, but I'm, I'm a business owner, right? Yeah, yeah. And it was like, so I always knew that's what I wanted to do. I never wanted to go to corporate America. I never wanted to work for someone else, yeah. but I didn't know how to do it. I yeah. didn't know how to go and be my own boss, what I was going to be my own boss in. So seeing you guys and really um, the opportunity this, and the doors are open, you literally sparked and started my entrepreneurial journey, wow. you know, so that impact is there. So um, two, I'm going to ask you two questions. I will okay. talk about... Um, the journey on both sides. I want to talk about a time where, because you lead a lot of people. We're going to get into that as well. Mm-hmm. Maybe I should go there first. No, we'll go. Let's talk about the time where you had success that ended up being a negative thing. Like you had success, but at, as a time where like maybe that wasn't as positive as I wanted it to be. Mm-hmm. And then a time that you had a failure that ended up actually being a positive thing. Mm-hmm. I think we got to really shift our thinking. That's why I got you yeah. here too. Yeah. How, how we look at things. So yeah. let's look at both of those. Yeah. So um, sometimes uh, things show up in your life that could be positive, but if in the wrong season, mm-hmm. it could actually be a negative. Now, negative, sometimes we have to make sure we're defining properly because I believe everything happens for you and nothing happens to you. So even something that's negative is giving me an opportunity to learn from that mistake so that it's not cyclical. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, uh, it is negative. But if it's something that was caused to redirect me, caused to have me think differently. For an example, when I first started making a lot of money, since I think 32 years old, we were making about a half a million dollars a year. Nice. And I wasn't used to it. Mm-hmm. Like it happened fast. When it did happen, we had momentum in our business and it took off. I mean, I literally went from not having a car to like, how many colors does it come in? <laughs> like I want his and her Escalades. It was bad. Whatever you're thinking right now was worse. And so here I am, a, a young guy with money, but has not, had not been taught financial education. So I was not a financially astute. And because of that, it, you know, there was no tracking of anything. It was no, I didn't know about a 529 plan or tuition funds. I didn't know about tax benefits and none of that. I'm just spending money because I know it's coming every month. Right, right. I know that 50K or so is coming every month. So I'm like, if I spend it, I'll get it again next month. So it was, it was horrible, man. Like whatever you're thinking right now, whatever y'all are thinking, it was worse. I promise you. But those are lessons, man, for me to teach my sons when they were 18 and 20 financial lessons that I learned in my 30s, right. which put them further ahead. So that's why it was, could have been a negative, was actually a positive because it taught me some things that if I had skated through that season in my life, yes, I could say, look what I have. Mm-hmm. But but because it put me in some some positions that I shouldn't have been in, that I, that I could have avoided, with the right people around me, it helped me to teach the importance of mentorship. Mm -hmm. It helped me to teach the importance of having people around you who are willing to be honest, which I know we'll get into culture building because honesty is the best policy when you're building a great culture in your family, in your business. People are willing to say, hey, look, man, I want the best light shining on you. So if I didn't tell you this, it will be because I don't care what light is shining on you. But because I want what's best for you, I'm willing to share this with you, this feedback, if you allow me to. And and when you have the right people around you, you know they're saying it out of love because you already know the relationships there. They have permission right. and they don't just have a position in your life. So uh, so that was, you know, there was a lot of things like that um, that, you know, could have been negative. But, you know, I don't define it as negative. It happened for me so that I can learn these lessons. And, you know, the mistake is not really a mistake unless you continue to make it. Uh, then it's something that's purposeful. You just have to change your habits, yeah. right? Those are choices you're making. That's not a mistake. You chose to do that. You keep choosing to do that same thing. Responsibility, accountability. Yeah, exactly you right. Know. Yeah. So listen, <laughs> I know that you are very humble. So you're not, but I'm going to put you on a spot. Oh, I want geez. 
Because I need people to know. Let, let's talk about. I need to know who who those who don't know, like what we're talking about here. Because tell us, you, you kind of put out there when you were making half a million dollars a year. Uh-huh. And I know that you, the documentation, you got your ring on today? I did. You got your ring on the documents that you made over a million dollars within a 12 month period with mm-hmm. your business. So I want to, we're not out here to flex on people and talk about how, you know, I'm making my money, <laughs> but it's important for people to know yeah. that you have the, the uh, as, as our man David Shan says, a social proof. Right, right, All right, right. So that, that you're making the money, but you didn't just go out here and just say, hey, I'm a millionaire, I'm making money. You built an, an, an enormous team and culture. Yeah. So I want to talk about, tell us first of all, how many, tell us about your team, like how many people I was where I'm looking for. I'm saying lead, but you know. Yeah. No, I know, I know what you mean. Yeah, and 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 it's a responsibility, right? Leadership is not only influence, but it's responsibility, mm-hmm. right? If you're leading a family, leading a team, there's responsibility that comes along with that. And in this particular ring, uh, it says T and V, Team New Vision, and on the side it says Faith Family Finance. So this particular ring is a ring that uh, my wife and I developed uh, to recognize uh, the champions on our team uh, to celebrate them uh, for earning a million dollars, and so we. We we buy it. Uh, we, um, you know, we gift it to our teammates. So, you know, the company had one, but we, we wanted to create a culture. And so that was important for us as we developed our own company um, to, to to recognize those who were not just marketing and selling a lot of product, mm-hmm. um, but who were um, were generating income for their family and their future. Uh, You've helped how many people earn over a hundred thousand dollars per year? So before I was before I was forty years old, we'd help forty people earn six figures. So and that's probably the thing that's most gratifying, refreshing for me. Yes, we made a lot of money, we made millions and millions of dollars ourselves in personal income, but it has been the amount of people. So when I when I first, you know, I was going for that, by the way. Okay. So that wasn't like just happened. When I was in my thirties and I started realizing, man, we got a couple of dozen people who are earning six figures that we've helped to mentor and coach. I was like, all right, 40 by 40. Nice. This is before nice. Jay-Z had the 40, yeah, 40 yeah, yeah. clubs. So. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I was thinking, man, that's like, if I was one years old and then two, like every year, my life I helped someone to make six figures so that was my goal initially uh, and we were able to, to accomplish that goal man it felt so good and then you know we turned that into you know millions and we've turned that into you know how many more people now we have over 100 people so it's just been a it's been a real blessing for us man to to maybe to guide and help a lot of people so we got our first start in in the direct sales network marketing mm-hmm. uh, space and then use that for you know real estate some other businesses yeah. that that we we're able to start always passive that though and always leveraged in Income. That's what I believe in. I don't like trading time for money. I don't like transactional income, which means I always have to be present and make my income. Mm-hmm. Uh, I like for my income to be able to come in. Now, now at some point, you got to be present, but it should be building up towards some type of right. passive residual residual income at some point. Yeah. Um, and, and in today's technology, it's it's available for all of us. You're not making some sort of passive income, and, and honestly. Hopefully that's the predominant amount of income yeah. is passive yeah. residual income. Yeah. Then, then you know you're, you're realizing over the last few years, you know you've seen how uh, how, how easily it is to, to to fall victim to the system. Oh yeah, no you doubt. Rely on somebody else to sign no your paycheck. No right? doubt, no doubt, man. And, but yeah. that that was me. The reason why I can speak to people and that down at people mm-hmm. is because I know what it's like to live a, a majority of my life at that time trading my time for money right, right. and having someone else determine my my, my worth. Yeah. And I wasn't mad at the mall for paying me $40,000 a year. I'd be mad at myself for accepting what perfect. they thought I was worth. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so so it wasn't no bitter feelings for them. I just had to say, you know what? If I feel like I'm worth $40,000 a month instead of $40,000 a year, then let me put myself in position to make that kind of money. The mall could never pay me that. <laughs> Excuse me, pay me that. Yeah. Yeah. So... So that's what that's what that's the way we started building now. Now at 53, man, 95 percent, at least 95 percent of my income is passive and residual, meaning before my feet touch the ground in the morning, we're blessed to have that income coming into our bank account. We even hear what, Tim, man, how much money you made? Just joke. Just joke. Just joke. Just joke. Just joke. Just joke. <laughs> Listen, we got a lot more to talk about. We're going to go to a quick break and we're going to come right back, getting some more conversation about culture and leadership with Darnell Self. 
Hey, this is Ryan C. Green. Thanks for tuning in and listening to this week's show. Hopefully you're enjoying it so far. Listen, I want to help you keep the conversation going and giving you the opportunity to join our Born to Be Dope Cypher, our exclusive Facebook group. Go to www.borntobedope.com. At the very top, you'll see a button that says join the Facebook group. Uh, do click that button. Go ahead, any information, and you'll get access to our pre online Facebook group. In that group, you have so many bonuses. So we keep the conversations going from the shows. We have our live shows that broadcast there so many people to network with and, and every week we raffle all free born to be dope gear for all the new members who will join that week so go ahead to www.borntobedope.com click the button join the exclusive facebook group so we can have more interaction keep the conversation going and you might just even win a free born to be dope shirt Hey, did you know that Born to Be Dope is more than just a show? That's right. Born to Be Dope is a, a movement. It's so many things uh, outside of just the show. We have the clothing line. We have the show. We have the book that's coming. But we also have the feature film and the live summit. Uh, so if you're a, a speaker, an expert, an author, you have a message that can help people master, magnify, and monetize their unique dopeness. If you have a message that will resonate with people on how to be unapologetically great at being them, and you want to share the stage with some of the top influencers and speakers, uh, or, and, and to, at our live summit uh, that's going to broadcast to millions of homes, then go to www.borntobedope.com. Look for the info on how to uh, join the next summit, our next casting call. Casting calls are going on right now for our next one. You don't want to miss it. Listen, if you've already been a part of one, you can still join us for another one. If you, if you missed out, you thought, I'm going to wait to see what this Born to Be Dope thing is all about. Now you realize you want to jump on board. Listen, it's still time. Just go to borntobedope.com. Click the button on how to join. Uh, get the information on our casting call. We look forward to working with you and helping you share your story. Hey, are you looking for dope t-shirts? Specifically, born to be dope t-shirts? Listen, go to www.weardopetees.com. You can get out, you can see our entire line for the born to be dope apparel. We have t-shirts, we have uh, sweatshirts. Uh, we're designing new stuff that's coming soon. So go to weardopetees.com. You can rep the brand that reps you. Get your shirts, get your hoodies, uh, buy one for a friend. Uh, go now to the website. You can see all the new gear that we have and go ahead and rep the brand that reps you. Go ahead and order your shirts, order your t-shirt, and then make sure when you wear it, you tag I am born to be dope on any social media so we can go ahead and recognize you. So go and get your shirts, go get your wear, uh, your gear at weardopetees.com. All right, welcome back to Born to be Dope. Let's get right back into it. We're here with Darnell Self, entrepreneur, uh, media personality. I don't say what call it. Like, you're not just a person. You know, when you when you host and you own the show, you're more than just a host. So it's like, you know, you kind of you got your own thing. But listen, let, let's jump into uh, leadership and then the culture because one okay. of the things we talk about Team New Vision. Um, full disclosure, you know, I was part of the organization, part of Team New Vision. I'm not even actively building the business anymore that I joined Team New Vision. And we talked about this when we met a couple a couple of days ago. But it was the culture yeah. that I'm like, I'm not I'm not going away. Like I'm yeah. still tuned in. I'm still yeah. getting emails. I'm still know what's going on. Yeah. Um what and I know you are one of the most goal oriented people. I know when you set a goal, you do it. Like no, I, I've not seen many goals that I've known you to set yeah. and you not make it. So I know that the culture you built wasn't an accident. It wasn't just, hey, here we are. Talk to us about, and those leaders are out there who um, are looking to build that culture because I believe there's a lot of positional leaders, Yeah. Um, but they aren't really transformational leaders. Yeah. They aren't dope leaders. <laughs> you know, yeah. they're just, they're in position, but they don't have that culture, that yeah. influence. Talk to us about, you know, how that came about. When did you learn, learn like, you know, just, yeah. I'm yeah. actually, give us all of it right now, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, um, it, it happened over time and through having great people around me um, who allowed me to make mistakes but take responsibility for those mistakes quickly, mm -hmm. right? And accountability quickly. Otherwise things fester and people are left to believe what they think you meant mm -hmm. because you never addressed it and say, that wasn't my intention yeah. at all. Yeah. And so I, I learned that through at 24 years old, um, the great late Jim Rohn had a system because it was, I'm about to age myself, mm -hmm. Ryan. It was a cassette system. Like if you're a millennial, Google cassette. And uh, tell me your favorite 
entrepreneurs and leaders built off of cassettes. <laughs> These ancient things we were built off of cassettes. But but this system was my first personal development system, and it was about building an unshakable character. Mm-hmm. And that's where it all started, right? Building this this character, the the type of person who you can count on to be who they said they are. Mm-hmm. And uh, and so when I was at my job at the mall, I was learning these lessons already because they already did the hiring, the firing, the scheduling, right, right, right. As, as a retail manager. So, but afterwards, and I worked at, at a mall called Prince George's Plaza. Mm-hmm. And afterwards, I take the team out to Cheesecake Factory. Nice. Big you know, ball. yeah, and we big, big ball. Yeah, <laughs> but, but guess what? I was investing my yeah. check into them, nice. and guess what? It, guess what happened? We were one of the top. We were one of the top stores in our entire mm-hmm. um, business. Nice. Um, and and that was not because of location, but because of the culture we built. Fair. People chose to stick around late. I didn't have to pay them. They already clock out. And it's like, what else do you need? Because it was relationship. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. They come in and do inventory for me. Hey, you need help doing inventory? And, and so, you know, it's, you develop an amazing culture when people voluntarily do it without getting paid for it. Mm-hmm. They mm-hmm. stick around longer. They show up earlier. Yeah. And, um, and, and that's not always easy, especially when we're talking about young people. These are mostly college students, et cetera. It's always something else they could find to do. Exactly yeah. right. <laughs> especially nowadays. Right. <laughs> so, so I learned this relationship building skill. And uh, one, again, was honesty, um, taking full accountability and responsibility when things don't go right mm-hmm. as a leader yeah. Yeah. and giving them credit when things are going well. Mm-hmm. So whenever the district manager or regional manager came in, it's like, man, you guys are number two and in in, out of the, you know, all the different stores. I'm like, hey, let's give it up for Frank, for Riesler, for, right? right. So they, were, they were like, hey, congratulations, Frank, right? It's giving it up to them. Because I wouldn't be who I am without them. Right, absolutely. And when it was a mistake, hey, listen, you guys are like, hey, that's on me. You know what I mean? Because I didn't teach them this. Or I didn't do a good enough job, obviously. So the, all those things I was learning back in the I had no idea it was going to lead me to, you know, Team Divisions had 370, I think we are now, 370,000 people wow. join. That's a lot of diverse Three individuals. Let's, 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 let, uh, let, let the beat breathe for a second. <laughs> 370,000 people have come through yeah. your organization. You yeah. started, what, 1999, I think it was, right? Uh, the 1990. end of 1998. Okay, so let's, let's easy. That's 24, so 24 years. 24 years, I'm not yeah. That's how many that would. But 300, you said 370? Yep. 370,000 people. That's, we all trying to get 1,000 followers, right? right. <laughs> Social media, you right. impacted life uh, directly and indirectly. 370,000 people out here. That, that's just amazing. I, Thank you, man. Yeah, man. It's, a, it's, it's really a blessing, man. But guess what? It taught me a lot because you're leading folks. And you, listen, it's one thing to lead someone who's never made any money. Mm-hmm. It's another thing to start leading people who are leading people. Mm-hmm. So now you're leading people who are already making, you know, three hundred, five hundred thousand dollars a year. Yeah. That's a different level of leadership because at some point yeah. you're fighting against ego. Right, right. Right. And so so these are all lessons that I've learned in leadership and uh, in culture building that's really helped us to have the the organization we have today, which is, in my opinion, just a phenomenal example of culture. I want to talk about the leadership piece and leading people who are above you. OK, because you that, that just resonated with me. And okay. then we're going to get into the culture piece, because. Those 370,000 people, I mean, you have people from all levels of sure. life, all, Absolutely. you know, like you said, different backgrounds. But I know as um, if building a, a business nowadays and those who are watching or want to build business, want to out there monetize your message. And um, I know a lot. One of the biggest mistakes I see people make is that when they start pricing their services, uh, they want to they, they, they're afraid to price at premium levels. Mm-hmm. They just want to get I got people are going to pay me right, that right. much money. Right. So there's a different kind of way you got to go about things. If you want to go out there and get top dollar people, they think different. They, they look at things different. Right. So maybe you can give us a nugget or two about dealing with those kind of people who, um, with all your success, there are people who have more money than you. Yeah, there absolutely. Who have more success no than you. Right. But that doesn't mean they can't learn from you and they right. can come to you. Who knows how they were brought to you and now you're leading them. Yeah. So how can we grow to, uh, one, believe in ourselves that we deserve and, and are worthy to be at that level that someone can learn from us, but then really appeal to a higher clientele, higher level person. 
Yeah, a lot of that is mindset, right? So because the only reason we don't um, price our product, our digital product, our you know services that we provide at a certain place is because of what we believe our value is, right? And so, and sometimes it's based on past failures or length of time since we've had success, right? So if you've had multiple failures back to back to back, you start thinking, am I ever going to succeed? And so thereby dictating your worth at a certain place or a certain level. For an example, Example, uh, even in a relationship, if you've had a failed relationship, failed relationship, failed relationship, you automatically start thinking, man, maybe I'm never going to have a successful relationship. So the value you place on yourself as being a person that can have a successful relationship has just diminished based on the amount of failed relationships you've had, not really your potential to be in a successful relationship. Also, not just based on the number of failures or failed attempts, it's also the length of time since you've had success mm. that can play a role in that. So number one, the frequency of failed attempts at anything in business you're like well maybe i'm not meant to own a business maybe i'm not meant to do a podcast maybe because you tried several times so the frequency and then the length of time and that's different for different people so for me it was four years so i'm starting to think the longer it takes me to have success the more i start doubting if i'm ever going to have that success right, right. and that's in any area of your life so a relationship if it's been seven years since you've had a relationship so it's not just the frequency of failed relationships it's also the length of time since you've had a successful one right. she's like dude it's been seven years maybe i'm just to be single hmm. you, you know what i mean so it's the length of time and the frequency of it that starts to, de to, to determine for ourselves our worth and it's just a self-imposed barrier by the way it's no truth to that but it's the truth that we've assigned and so we've got to dispel that myth because that's all it is mm -hmm. in personal development number one helped me to do that yeah. so reading books listen to audios of others who've had similar um journeys as me right. helped me to see wait man hold up if they took seven years and i'm only a year four oh man i still got three more and i could still be where they are yeah man if they've gone through 12 attempts i've only gone through four failed attempts man i'm so so personal development helped me to see reading the stories of others being in the right rooms hearing testimonies of others um helped me to see a brighter future for myself wow. so personal development and associating with the right people because if you're not careful you have people to co-sign with your weakness and not people who will help you to move beyond your weakness they'll be like yeah i know what you mean man and yeah. those two people yeah. together yeah. oh my god <laughs> you know what I, mean? I don't mean no harm. right right you know yeah, they about your plan b oh exactly right that's <laughs> yeah. exactly right man yeah. you're around the wrong people man it can be and that's the wrong significant other wrong workout partner wrong yeah. right it, it could be the detriment of what you would like your future to look like yeah you talked about on one of your episodes one of your podcast episodes with you and your wife tracy you know i don't think you said her name so i'm gonna get you in trouble bro you shout out T self, Tracy yeah. self, my co host. <laughs> I said your name. <laughs> no. Tracy, 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 Tracy. No, I said it more than Ryan. <laughs> you got that. But uh, one of the shows, one of my favorite episodes you guys did was you, you talked about, you brought the question about um, is it, I remember if you talking about your, your own person or judging other people, is it who you are or where you are? Yeah. Now, I've talked about this in different ways, but when I heard your your spin on it it was just like that was just a simple like that was so good yeah talk about that because i think a lot of times people are you know, when you go in that way you're yep. in that journey yeah like am i the problem or you know I, let me preface it with this because i i take it personally like i know when i met my wife i had just come back from um living in virginia i've been through a divorce i ain't had much of nothing right mm -hmm. um didn't have a car i was staying with my dad for a while and working a security job for ten dollars an hour yeah. as a grown man yeah okay? yeah so but but that's where i was but i knew that's not who i was that's exactly right you know so i want you to go ahead and uh talk t teach us about that yeah. journey what that difference is and how people can make sure that they're they're you know yeah right it's a, i mean we we can really dive deep on that for hours mm -hmm. quite honestly because it really helps people to uncover um the cause of why they are where they are in the circumstances that they're currently are in mm -hmm. and sometimes when we can uncover that we don't have to repeat it. Mm -hmm. But if we don't realize it, we're walking around with sandbags around our ankles and don't realize it until someone helps us to see that they're there. And then we remove it. We're like, this is what, what it's supposed to feel like when you walk. Yeah. They, they didn't know because they've had sandbags for so long. They struggled for so long. They didn't even realize that they were moving slower than they had to. And this is why personal development podcasts like Born to be Dope, like this is important because it, we're talking about 
creating the best version of you, like that dope version of you, not the dope version of somebody else, right. because the only way that you're ever going to be you is if you stop trying to be someone else. Otherwise, you're like, man, I mean, right now, and I'm just, it's how you know people comparing. I'm just, I'm only. And if they say, if you say just and only, you're comparing. Mm. I'm mm. just, just com in comparison to what? Right. I'm only, only in comparison to what? So anytime I hear someone, so when you've led for a long time, you listen for key words, as I'm, I listen more than I do talk when I'm mentoring someone, because I can already tell them what the challenge is based on listening to them for a few minutes, just yeah. because I've led a lot of people. So all I'm saying is that, you know, sometimes it is where people are in life. It is a circumstance. Yes, they're responsible for it in some cases. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's because of what they've been told so often. They've been told by their parents. They've been told by their teachers. They've been told by their first love. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And now they have walked around with that label. You know, with that cloak on mm. and they've not removed it, not been around the, the people who have been honest enough to say, oh, that's not even you. Right. 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 So it's where you are, but that's not you. Yeah. Yeah. Right? So that's that's the difference. So sometimes it's where you are, like where I was, was a man without a car, mm. a man whose house was up for foreclosure, a man who had failed several times in business. But that wasn't who I was. I wasn't a right. failure. Right. I was just failing. Mm. You, you follow what I'm saying? So so I was going through, that was my verb at that time. I was failing, but that, that wasn't the definition of who Darnell Self yeah. was. Yeah. And so that's what I mean. But sometimes, you know, it's it's your circumstances. It is where you are, but that is not define who you are. Sometimes it does, though. Sometimes that's just who that person is. Yeah. They're mean. They're insensitive. Right. They, they, they right. Exactly. They're, they're <laughs> just, they got envy eating them up from the yeah. inside out. They can't be happy for anybody else. Yeah. And so until they remove themselves from that space, they can't even if they got into the same room where you're, you you put yourself in a room with seven figure earners and you thrive in that room because you're happy for those yeah. people yeah. and you celebrate those people and they appreciate the energy you brought to the table, even if they're making more than you put somebody else in the same room. Yeah. And so where you are, the same location, you and this person, right. but who they are causes this person not to grow in that room. In fact, those folks don't even want that person in that room anymore because mm -hmm. they're hating on them. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? And so that's why who you are is important. So yes, where you are is important, but who you are is just as important yeah. because who you are can take you to the next level or hold you back from ever being invited to those rooms again. But those who know who they are and they're just in a, ne they're just in a negative space right now, yeah. where they are is not where they want to be. What was the first step they should take? Yeah, so the, the very first thing, like if you know that you've been called to do something great mm -hmm. and you know, man, I'm supposed to be further along than this. I know this isn't me, but yet where you are is a tough spot. Mm -hmm. The first thing you should do is admit to yourself that yes, this is where I am, but it's not who I am. And so now the things you start to say to yourself start to shape what it is you attract. That's why self-talk, yeah, you know, yeah. talk good to yourself. Right, right. It starts there because the story you tell yourself about yourself is critically important. Yeah. So if, if you're like, man, I can't believe I'm such a loser. I can't, these are all stories you're telling yourself. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. You know what I mean? I can't believe I, and so I would reshape those stories I'm telling myself. Mm -hmm. Those things allow me to attract something different because I started telling a different story to myself about myself. Yeah. And uh, stories sell, man, even the stories we tell ourselves. So I would start there because you have more conversation, more dialogue with you than anybody else. Should I wake up early? Should not. Should I go work out? Should not. Should I hit this snooze right now? Should not. So you, Should I eat this? It might have been your show. I heard that was like 700 times or 700 decisions that you make in a day to yourself. Maybe it was, maybe it was, I don't know if it was your show or not. 40,000. So it was your show. Yeah. Got a number wrong. Yeah. 40,000. 40,000, bro. Man. Yeah. And some experts say more than that. That's cool. So because it's, it's at all times, like right, even right, right now when yeah. you're sitting here, you're like, should I ask this question? Should right, I ask that right. question? Like, These are all kinds of right. Right. Exactly. Yeah, man. Yeah. Oh my God. They're all day long. Yes. And so what if you say, if you're having that many conversations with yourself, mm -hmm. more than you are with anybody else, what if you could shape what those conversations are saying? Yeah. Right. Because, you know, through these ear gates, man, allow us to think a certain way. Say it. This is why we have to be careful, man. I'm so protective of my energy and my space yeah. and what I watch and what I allow in, because if I want to be if I'm going to add value and I know you do, that's the reason why we're having this podcast. You want to add more value then you have to be become more. You have to become more valuable. Mm -hmm. People say, man, I just want to add value. Well, listen, you're going to add the same value you did 10 years ago unless you become more valuable this year than you were 10 years ago. That's and that's intentional. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah.
Man, listen, um, this, <laughs> this show, again, I forgot the beginning, you know, what we do at Born to Be Dope is we combine personal development and hip hop. Hip hop mm. is the most powerful cultural force the world has ever seen. Yeah. It happens to be the 50th anniversary of it. Nice. Um, I was there for what three, four years of it. No, that's joking. No, I've been <laughs> almost, almost the whole time. But um, so we want to get into some hip hop. Okay. Um, not like your top 10 list, not like that, but we want to, yes. cause I believe that our generation and you know, we think about us started with this. We look at pictures of our parents mm-hmm. when they were, or our parents singers when they were 30 years old, mm-hmm. they look old. Yeah. You know I mean, I'll, like, I'm not saying, <laughs> but, but you, you mean. know, like you look at old pictures of some of the top singers, like they look like they were 50, 60. You're like, he was 27. Right. Right. So people look at our culture. Like, why do we still look so young? Yeah. And I believe it's because we are hip hop and hip hop drives everything, the dress, the culture, and because we feel young, because yeah. we, we created that job. Yeah. Right. So I forgot where I was going with that. Why I even brought it up. It's all good, man. My, my point is <laughs> <laughs> we talk about hip hop. Oh, that's what I was going to say. So it was always there. Yeah. And I, I kind of, when I came with this Born to Be Dope, um, it was about just trying to tap into, cause, cause hip hop was that, that culture just being unapologetically great at being you. Yeah. That's what hip hop was, just being us. So talk to me about, I'll, I'll ask you this. Tell me a song that was your first song that you heard that you was like, you know what? I'm dope. Whether the song was necessarily speaking something to you, but you heard it, you was like, you felt like, Mm, that's me. Like I, you know, like yeah. just like every dude play a Jay Z song nowadays, right? You know, and I, I'm guilty as well. But you know, growing <laughs> up, there wasn't no Jay Z. So right. who was it? When did hip hop become like a driving force in your life? What song was that for you? Yeah, that's that's funny, man. So in different seasons of my life, different hip hop songs have meant different things mm-hmm. uh, to me. And um, I'm about to really age myself now. But the very first hip hop album I own was Sugar Hill Gang. Wow. And um, and so I learned all the words and I was like, oh, yes. And I felt good, man, about, you know, our culture and where we were and people walking around singing the same songs. And then we had, you know, Dougie Fresh come out and yeah. Slick Rick come out yeah. and everybody was lottie dotty. You know, what I mean, it was, you just right. felt, you know, what I mean, so I don't quite know if it inspired me to be who I am today but it allowed me to build relationships with people Mm -hmm. in certain environments, cookouts. When I used to travel to Atlanta all the time, we all, no matter where you were from, we were connected through that. And so the connectivity that came from hip hop for me, um, from different people from different places meant a lot. Right, right. Uh, And then my podcast actually started because one of the reasons was because of a Big Sean song, Bigger Than Me. And um, because I wasn't going to do it, and my wife was like, you really want to do a podcast? And she said, well, if you do it, you know it's bigger than you. Mm. And from that point, whenever I listened to Bigger Than Me, it made me think of that, that it was, you know what I mean? The reason why I lose sleep when I'm thinking about my topics, the reason why I sacrifice things from this to put into my podcast, you know, because you got to, we all have 24 hours in a day. Mm -hmm. So you have to figure out what are your priorities. And for me... The podcast, yes, we've monetized it, and yes, we've done well with it. But um, thanks to my mentor David Shans, yeah. shout out to him. But because of, uh, I knew it was bigger than me. Yeah. I knew that if somebody was exactly where I was, and felt like, man, no way am I going into next year how I'm living this year. Right, right. And because of that, I know that something I'll say, because this is my real journey. Mm-hmm. Right. I'm, this isn't theoretical. Right. It's not like, you know, well, perhaps that's why I don't use those words. I know yeah. I've walked this yeah. for 24 years of my life or more, you know, shifting my self-talk in my relationships with my wife and my relationships with my kids, and my relationships in business. Um, you know, it's helped me to become the man that I'm blessed to be today, man. And so so that so that Big Sean, um, which is funny, uh, really helped me to 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 really go through the the podcast journey Um, so different different times in my life different things i listen to help to keep pushing me further ahead yeah Yeah. and this question is not so much hip-hop related but when you were speaking it reminded me something i wanted to ask you earlier sure someone like you said i'm a visionary right they they say you got visionaries you got um people who out there and actually do implementers things like that so I can see someone's talent, someone's skill, and all like that is just like, oh, you can do this, 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 this. Oh, yeah. you can make that into this, you can turn it into this and that, that. 
I'm not sure I want to do all that, but I'm like, that's just what how, what I'm gifted at. I don't know. Right. I'm, not, I'm not the only one. All, all right. right. So I bring that up because someone like yourself, like when I see someone like yourself, I'm like, oh, he should be doing this. He could be doing that. He could be doing that. <laughs> but I've, I've grown to a position where I don't tell, like I may see those things in people, but I know it's not my position to tell people, hey, you go do this. But you don't know what people's visions are, yeah, what yeah, their purposes yeah. are, what their journey is. Um, so I, I bring it up because I know you've probably throughout your career, throughout your journey, people have said, why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? Why don't you start this? And there's people out there right now who, when people say those things to them, they're like, okay, I'm going to do it. <laughs> okay. Okay. And they're all over the place. Yeah. What kept you focused and how can, um, people who may get that feedback all the time, mm-hmm. how can they, yeah. uh, you know, kind of know when the right time is for them to, to do anything differently than what they the journey they're already on. Yeah. I mean, I would try not to overthink that. You know, we say go with your gut, but, but, you know, we, we, sometimes we make mistakes mm-hmm. and we jump too fast mm-hmm. uh, or we don't jump fast enough. We miss out on the opportunity and we look, kick, you know, kick ourselves, beat up on ourselves. But for me, um, I've always been so clear mm-hmm. on what I want. What I don't want is also clear. Mm. Being clear on what you don't want. Yeah. So if yeah. if you're if you are super focused and clear on what you want, you know exactly what it looks like. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know exactly what it then anything that comes your way does not look like that, you're clear on yeah. what you don't want. Yeah. Cause uh, cause things are always coming. Right. Absolutely. Right. So you have to distract yourself from the distractions. And if we're not careful, we're like, all right, and it doesn't even look like this. Yeah. But we're selling for this because we want feel like this one is taking too long to come. Yeah. But I'm so clear on it and I'm so focused on it. By the way, you said earlier that I mean I was really goal focused and I am. But you should know and the audience should know that ma- the majority of the time I've had to reset and shift the timeline because a goal has a has a date. Mm-hmm. Right, absolutely. Uh, otherwise it's a dream. So I've always had a date. But the majority, I mean, like over 90% of the time, I didn't hit my goal in the date that I set. But I didn't change the goal. I just changed the date. Nice. Nice. Always. Yeah. So so just so folks know, I mean, there are plenty of times like, hey, I'm going to launch my podcast this day. I may adjust the date, but I'm not going to adjust the goal. I'm still right, launching. Right. Yeah. So I'm just going to set. Now, here's the problem. The problem is. If we reset and then don't put a date, because now that we didn't meet the first date, we're like, well, I'm not going to put a date on it because now we're unsure about putting a date because we missed the yeah. first one. No, yeah. still set a date. So right. that that keeps me focused at all times. So I'm always setting a date and I've always got an accountability partner holding me accountable for that date. Yeah. Otherwise, I'm always going to let me down. Yeah. Oh, I'll just do it tomorrow. Oh, I'll do it next month. So I've always got somebody saying, hey, you know, next Thursday is a date, right? Right, right. I'm looking like this because <laughs> this podcast was probably been launched probably almost a year ago now, but it didn't happen. But I didn't change the goal. We just changed the date. You're watching this because it's been launched now. And we talked about this outside of the show. Uh, I, 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 my issue has always been trying to be perfectionist. Before yeah. And no matter how many times I hear people teach against it, you know, some some habits are hard to break. You know, trying to perfect certain things before you launch it instead of just launching it and say, you know, if I launched the show a year ago, who knows, you know, what kind of following I could have by now. By now, we could have a nice set like this. And but anyway, I'm sorry, it's not about me. That's why I got you here. No, man, but you know, do it ugly, man. And that's yeah. that's the key. Just just do it. And um, sometimes you actually benefit more people by doing it ugly than you do doing it perfect. Mm-hmm. First of all, there is no nothing perfect, right? right? You, so I, I teach my kids, don't strive for perfection, strive for excellence. Mm-hmm. There is no perfect. Yeah, You're going to yeah. disappoint yourself every time. But strive for excellence. Be the best that you can be at it. So we're not saying don't be the best when you do it. Yeah. We're just saying don't wait for it to be perfect. And the reason why doing it ugly relates to more people because more people have been doing things ugly in their life. I mean, if they if they admit to themselves, they're like, man, I haven't been organized. I've been messing yeah. up on this area of my life. I'm just not consistent in this area. I procrastinate in this area. Yep. So they're used to that. And so by you doing it like that, they're like, oh my gosh, thank you. Finally, yeah. someone who didn't have it perfect, didn't have the light. Like you look at my podcast, yeah. the lighting hasn't been perfect. The audio hasn't been perfect. I mean, we just kept going. Look, David Shane is my mentor in podcast. He didn't even have the name of a podcast when he launched it. He was like, here we are. Welcome <laughs> to the podcast. It's like, go back his first one there is wow. no name wow. he launched without a name without a brand so my point is is that and, and now he's earning seven figures in podcasting right. so my point is is that I, you know listen guys start mm-hmm. start 
start doing something. So we talked about journaling so that you can look back and say, all right, I've taken these three steps. Right. Otherwise, a year from now, you, you still haven't taken step one. Man, all right, let, let's uh, look at, we gotta wrap it. I don't know how long we've been going, so we gotta we gotta wrap it up. But um, I want to get back to some hip hop stuff. What, what are you listening to now? Um, just in terms of like hip hop yeah, or music in general. I mean, I think it's, it's so. Hip hop. I mean, look, I'm probably the most diverse guy. If you <laughs> those who follow me on Instagram, by the way, it's only one real me. There's a whole bunch of imposters out there. Darnell underscore self, and you gotta look at all my reels. You'll see and hear all the music I play or listen yeah. to because I always use them on my reels. And it's as diverse as you can get. I mean, it's gospel in there, it's hip hop in there, it's R and B in there, it's just some jazz tunes in there. My reels are a little bit of everything. So quite honestly, man, I listen to a little bit of everything. My team is a little bit of everybody. Um, I got Christians, Muslims, Buddhists, atheists, a little bit of everybody that I lead, uh, which is a whole nother leadership topic we can talk about the next time, how to lead people who are different than you. Yeah. Um, so we can maybe do that the next on, on another, uh, if I'm invited back, another opportunity. Got to open invitations. <laughs> opportunity to lead, man. Um, because there's so many leadership skills we could teach. And look, it, you know, first person you got to lead is leading you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The toughest person to lead is you. Yeah. People are like, man, I just can't get, I can't, like my podcast staff, I have a staff of four for my podcast. That's it, right? So, but you, so in every area of your life, you're probably going to end up leading, right? You know, your mom or your dad, you're leading, you're leading kids, right? So, you, you know, it's always some leadership, but the first person you got to lead is you. So, that's why, you know, in my opinion, many folks uh, have not been able to grow a following of engaged, excited people who can't wait. Mm to say what's next right. because they trust where you're leading them is somewhere that's going to be beneficial for them. Wow. And that's how you create a long term following, not just folks who are with you today and gone tomorrow, but people right. who can't wait to join and almost refuse to leave. Nice. Yeah. Nice. So uh, a little bit of everything, man. Yeah, your question, yeah, man. I, I was saying, I want to, uh, what landed on this question? What what's the, what's your favorite song to listen to that when you turn on your kids are like dad not again? <laughs> um, and your kids probably, are more adults, almost now, so. Yeah, there's a lot of them. Um, but probably um we um will win. Um, and who's that about? Jaden Carr. It's, it's a uh, okay, gospel. Yeah, so yeah. So it's it, it's uh. For me, it's inspirational because sometimes, you know, you feel like, man, am I wasting my time here? And uh, for me, um, I've always been one who outwardly people would say, man, he's got to always feel like he's about to win every day. But sometimes it's a lot that happens, a lot that comes your way. And you have to remind yourself to, you know what, in spite despite yeah. all of this i'm about to win yeah. we still winning absolutely yeah i always say the, the leaders need leaders to fall on the motivated need someone to motivate them too so yeah yeah no when, doubt when everyone's looking at you is you know where do you get your support from? yeah so, yeah well listen mr self like I, i've been calling mr self for 20 something years i know so, man it's man. like darnell darnell d self <laughs> but uh i want you to tell people about your show tell people how they can contact you uh, follow you, you know, whatever it is you got going on. I want people to get this this good self talk in their life. So go ahead and uh, tell them, tell them how to get, get in touch. Yeah, so I uh, appreciate that, man. I, you know, we're we're on YouTube, all the places where you listen to podcasts, your favorite podcast, places you watch your favorite podcast. We're on YouTube there. <clears throat> We also have our The Self Talk Experience on Instagram. So The Self Talk Experience on Instagram. Just look us up wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. You'll see the self-talk experience there. If you want to watch it, which my wife and her crazy expressions sometimes, it's great to watch it, um, is uh, on YouTube. And again, you can just put in the self-talk experience. Or you can just put in my name or her name, Darnell Self or Tracy Self and uh, and plug in. I think you'll be blessed by uh, all the episodes. We're at uh, 70 episodes, nice. depending on when this one airs. Yeah. Nice. Awesome, man. Awesome. So listen. I'm Ryan C. Green. We're here with uh, Darnell Self. You're watching Born to Be Dope. I want to again remind you subscribe, share this out. This is just episode one. You can go watch the show on our uh, YouTube channel. Watch it on uh, what are we on? On, on Stage Plus. Try to make sure I don't forget anybody. Just 
I am born to be dope is the uh, Instagram. You go and find me on YouTube, all that kind of stuff. Um, but what, what was I gonna say? Make sure that you, you got some new projects coming out. I don't know yeah. if they know about that. Born to be, I man. Thank you. <laughs> See, thank you, man. We got Born to Be Dope, the movie coming out. So make sure y'all uh, tune into that. That's coming out very soon. The feature film is a visual mixtape. So again, you'll be able to see motivation set to some awesome hip hop beats. Something that's never been done before. It's a visual experience. Looking forward to that. If you're interested in, in getting information about that, go to borntobedope.com. Uh, but we're excited about what the show's about to be. Again, I want to thank you for being my first guest. You're welcome, brother. And uh, if you all are watching, we got bonus footage that we're going to post only on our our fan base page so go to uh, Ryan C. Green Media on fan base um, and you can get that uh, bonus content there so I want to thank you again Mr. Self it's been a pleasure, pleasure. yes sir go out to you and remember go out there be unapologetically great at being you because you want to be dope this is the illest rhyme I ever wrote said I was born to be dope I dream big like my visions were projected on the movie screen these sides stamming into water color blue screen with the hustle, turn my dreams into reality. I'm my ancestors while the dreams on the balcony. Scribbling notes into the margin of my composition. But what's next? Man, the efforts for my ambition. I failed to step back when kept pushing. Reinventing myself, establish a better footing. Fall down six times.